Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're doing some Eureka Squared work today. All right. We're dealing with grade five, module two, topic B, lesson number seven. Lesson number seven. Now, the name for lesson number seven is, is included in the description notes underneath of this video, but I'll read it, right? Lesson number seven, we'll be adding and subtracting fractions with related units by finding equivalent fractions numerically. So it says numerically. So that means we're not drawing no area models. We're not drawing strip diagrams. We're not doing none of that. I like drawing the pictures. I like doing the area models. You know, I like doing the strip diagrams, but sometimes we don't have time for all that. Sometimes we need to just know how to figure out equivalent fractions without, you know, drawing a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, because, you know, sometimes, you know, being in art class is cool. Sometimes being in art class is not cool. We don't always have time for that. So we got to know how to do both. Right. We got to know how to figure out, figure it out both ways. OK, we got to be versatile like that. All right. Now, related units. Now, what are related units? Related units are, remember, related units. We talked about this in the lesson five video. Related units are when you look at your denominators. Denominators are the bottom numbers, right? Numerators are the top numbers. Numerators are up top. Denominators are down bottom, right? Like down the bottom of West Philly, right? Think about it like that, all right? When one of the new denominators is a factor of the other denominator. So 17 is a factor of 51. A lot of people don't know that because 51 is not a popular number. 17 is not a, really a popular number either, for real, for real. Um, seven, I mean, 17 is prime, you know what I'm saying? They don't have a lot going on with it, for real, but... Um, 17 times 3 is 51. At the same time, 51 divided by 3 is 17. So 51 is a multiple of 17, and 17 is a factor of 51. They are related units. These mean, that means that these fractions are related units. All right? They're related units. Okay? Or the unit, at least the unit fractions of those fractions are related units, I should say. All right? Now, we're going to find equivalent fractions, meaning fractions that have different numbers in the numerator and denominator, but have the same value. They have the same value right? It might be the same amount, but just broken up into more pieces or less pieces, all right? Now, let's show how to do this. What you need to do is first look at your denominators, and like I already told you that 17 times 3 equals 51, all right? So, that's one way to create common denominators. Common denominators meaning our denominators are the same, all right? Let me put my paper down real quick. So, check this out. What I could do is I could say, I could rewrite 15 over 17. Now notice, notice how long this fraction bar is. Notice how long this fraction bar is. I did that on purpose. I wasn't, I wasn't tripping, I did it on purpose, right? Because I'm gonna put a number here and a number here. In order to make this 17 become a 51, I gotta multiply it by three. But I can't just multiply the 17 by three. What I do down the bottom, I also gotta do up top. I got, if I multiply 17 by 3, I also got to multiply the 15 by 3. And I leave this one alone because this is already a 51, so I don't got to change that. But what's 15 times 3? 15 times 3 is 45, right? There's a bunch of ways to figure that out. You could break the 10 and 15 down into 10 and 5. 10 times 3 is 30. 5 times 3 is 15. 30 plus 15 is 45, right? So that becomes, boom, over here, 45. 17 times 3, we already talked about that. 17 times 3 is 51. And then we got plus 27 over 51. All right, and then we add these up, 45 and 27. Now we're using our addition skills. What I would do is break it down by tens and ones, tens and ones, right? 45 and 27, I got 40 and I got 20. Just like we count the money, right? 40 and 20 is $60. 5 and 7, it's $12. What's 60 plus 12? 60 plus 12 is 72. So we got 72 over 51. 72 over 51. That's our answer. That's an improper fraction. We could convert it to a mixed number, but I'm not going to focus on that right now. All right, let's go to another example. Oh, matter of fact, no, 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 no. Before we go to another example, there's another way that I could have did this problem. Notice how we multiplied by three. We made the 17 into a 51. I decomposed. I decomposed the 17s down into smaller pieces, right? Don't let it confuse you. Even though 51 is a bigger number, we still decomposed because we created smaller pieces. By decom We decompose to create smaller pieces. In order for the pieces to be smaller, the denominator has to be bigger. Write that down in your notes. In order, to in order to create smaller pieces, the denominators must be bigger. So 
one seventeenth is bigger than one fifty first. One seventeenth is bigger than one fifty first because the piece is going to be smaller. Because think about it, if you got to share something with fifty one people versus having to share something between seventeen people, the people the seventeen people is getting bigger pieces than the fifty one people because the fifty one people is less to go around. You got to make the pieces smaller. You got to make the pieces smaller. You know what I mean? All right. So now. Now we decomposed. Now let's compose. We can compose the 2751st. So let's do this. 15 17 plus 27. Again, long fraction bar. Long fraction bar, right? I can make this 51 smaller. I can break this 51 down into a 17 by doing the opposite of multiplication, which is division. I could divide by 3 and divide by 3. If I divide by 3 at the bottom, I got to divide by 3 at the top. All right, so now I got 15 over 17 plus, what's 27 divided by 3? That's 9. What's 51 divided by 3? 17. And now we add them up. What's 15 plus 9? 15 plus 9 is 24. 24 over 17. All right, 24 over 17. Now, we should get the same answer that we got the first time. The reason that we don't is because I didn't reduce the fraction. My bad. I wasn't thinking. I could have reduced this. These numbers are both divisible by three. That is their common factor. Their greatest common factor, rather. 72 divided by three is 24. 51 divided by three is 17. So I just did this to show you that we can, as the, as the title of the lesson says, we can add or subtract fractions with related units by finding equivalent fractions numerically. So 15 17 is equivalent to 45 51 and 27 51 is equivalent to 9 17 Again, 27 51 is equivalent to 9 17 15 17 is equivalent to 45 20, 51 right? We decompose to get this. We compose to get that. We decompose. To get this, bigger denominator, we decomposed. Smaller denominator, we composed. All right, let's do another example. So let's go to, let's say number two. Number two, five, six plus eight twelfths. Five, six plus eight twelfths. Five, six plus eight twelfths. So what we could do is, um, I could decompose this five, six and, and make this six into a 12. So we have common denominators, all right? Let's do that. So let's do 5 over 6. Now, when I decompose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 2. So I got to multiply the 5 by 2. And then we just add the 8 twelfths. What's 5 times 2? 10. What's 6 times 2? 12. So now I'm doing 10 twelfths plus 8 twelfths. So 10 twelfths is equivalent to 5 6. 5 6 is equivalent to 10 twelfths. They mean the same thing. I just proved it because I multiplied both of these by two. And you know how we know, in case you're still wondering, like, how you know that that's, they're the same fraction? How you know they're the same value? This is how we know. Notice I multiplied by two on the top and two on the bottom. This is a fraction. Two over two is a fraction. Anytime, and a fraction is also a division problem. Anytime you divide a number by the same exact number, the quotient is one. So what that means is two over two is the same thing as one. So if it's the same thing as one, they like synonyms. Like think ELA class, synonyms, words that are different but mean the same thing. Two over two mean the same thing as one. So what happens when you multiply anything by one? You get that same thing. So even though five over six is a different num has different numbers than 10 over 12, the value is the same because all I, I multiplied by something that was equ equivalent to one. So keep that in mind. I multiplied by something that's equivalent to one. It's the same thing as one. Two over two is the same thing as one. Five over five is the same thing as one. A billion over a billion is the same thing as one. So it don't matter. So that's why I, this is like a math trick, right? It's like a cheat code, basically. It's a cheat code so that you can get common denominators. And then you can actually do the addition. That's why I like math. It's a bunch of different, it's like a game. It's all a game. You just got to learn the rules. Once you learn the rules, math is fun and math is easy. But you got to learn the rules and you got to practice. Because what, hap what happens is somebody will teach you and then you'll forget because you didn't practice. You got to practice daily. Just like you practice your video games daily. You got to practice daily. All right. So look, 
10 twelfths plus 8 twelfths. That's going to be 18 twelfths all together. Then I would reduce this because the common factor is 6. Well, it's got a bunch of common factors, but the greatest common factor is 6. So 18 divided by 6 and 12 divided by 6 is going to be 3 halves. All right. Now, I decomposed, right? But what if I compose? Let's try this, right? What if I compose the 8 twelfths? And break that 12 down into a 6. I can do that, right? Because I would do 12 divided by 2 to get 6. And 8 is also divisible by 2. So I can compose this 8 twelfths into bigger pieces, right? A 6th is bigger than a 12th. Again, you're sharing something with 6 people, you get more individually as a person than you would if you were sharing something with 12 people. So a 12th is smaller than a 6th. A 6th is bigger than a 12th. Because think about it. If you were sharing... How much would you get? How big would your piece of the pie be? If you were sharing something with 12 people, you're getting less than if you're sharing something with six people. All right? So that's a way to remember, like, you know, what fractions are bigger or what happens when the denominator gets bigger or gets smaller. So if we compose, we're going to make this denominator smaller because we're combining pieces. We're com every two twelfths is one sixth. Every a twelfth and a twelfth put together, that's a sixth. A twelfth and a twelfth put together is a sixth. Two of them, it makes a six. So let's do that. So we start out with five, six, and we're adding eight and 12. Now we're going to divide to make the 12 into a six. So we divide this by two, we divide this by two. So we got five sixths plus four sixths. So four sixths, it's difficult for me to say that. <laughs> Is equal to 8 twelfths. Stay the same thing. All right? So now we add how many sixths do we have all together? We got nine of them. Nine sixths, which is also three halves. Why is it three halves? Because three is a common factor. I can do nine divided by three, and I can do six divided by three. Nine divided by three is three. Six divided by three is two. So either way, we get three halves. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more. And then we wrap this video up. Um... Um, 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 okay, yeah, let's do this one. Let's do two fifths plus four tenths. Two plus two fifths plus four tenths. Let's decompose this two fifths. Let's decompose the two fifths. Break this five down into and break these fifths down into tenths. Fifths down into tenths. We double in the pieces. We double in the number of pieces. So the piece gets each piece gets smaller by half by by a half. All right. So in order to do that, I gotta multiply each of these by two. Got to multiply each of these by two. Got to multiply each of these by two. So I got two, boom, over five. So two times two, five times two, plus four tenths. What's two times two? Four. What's five times two? Ten. So we got the same fraction. Four tenths plus four tenths equals eight tenths. Remember, never add the denominators. Never add the denominators. Never add the denominators. Never, ever, ever ever add the denominators we're trying to figure out how many tenths we have so we only add the numerators because that tells us how many tenths we got we got four tenths and we got four tenths all together we got eight tenths you know and that's equal to four fifths why is it equal to four fifths because eight divided by two is four ten divided by two is five two is a common factor between eight and ten all right let's do it another way let's um let's compose the four tenths we could break the tenths down into fifths because 10 divided by 2 gives us 5 and 4 is also divisible by 2 since it's an even number. All even numbers are divisible by 2. All right, keep that in mind. All right, so we got 2 fifths plus 4 over 10 divided by 2 divided by 2. All right, so the 2 fifths stays the same. What's 4 divided by 2? 2. What's 10 divided by 2? 5. 2 fifths and 2 fifths all together. How many fifths you got? 4 of them. 4 fifths. See what happened and with this way? We didn't even have to simplify. We had to reduce nothing. So that's basically, that's how we, that's how we find equivalent fractions numerically. That's how we do that. So we did a couple of examples. Um, we kind of, with these examples, we were able to either compose or decompose in every one of these examples. Of course, it's not always going to be like that, 
But, you know, we just had to, we had to rename the fractions. You know what I'm saying? We had to rename 15 17 into 45 51st. We had to rename 27 51st into 9 17 You know, just like people rename themselves, like Malcolm X on my sweatshirt. Malcolm X Liberation University sweatshirt. That was a college that was short-lived down in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, first it was in Durham, North Carolina. Then it relocated to Greensboro, North Carolina. But it was an independent black college back in the late 1960s, right? Named after Malcolm X. Malcolm X was born Malcolm Little. Then, you know, got into the streets. His nickname was Detroit Red, you know. Um, then, you know, changed his name, became Malcolm X. Then became, you know, Malik Al-Shabazz. Then, you know, went to, went, to, went to the continent of Africa, spent a bunch of time in Africa, you know, developing himself as a Pan-Africanist. Was out there in West Africa. They, the, the brothers and sisters out there renamed him Omawale. Omawale Malcolm X. Omawale means the sun has returned. You know, so just like people rename themselves, we rename fractions. We rename fractions so that we can do addition and subtraction because we need to have common denominators. Common denominators. You know what I'm saying? All right. So that's lesson seven. Go get some practice. I'll see y'all on the next video. Peace.